Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the campus of Harding High School for this week's Hometown Cable 3 High School Football Game of the Week. Tonight, this is Jeff Harlow along with Tom Ray. Tonight, we've got the Harding Rams playing host to the Garringer Wildcats in an interconference matchup. The Rams, of course, from the Tri-County 4A and the Wildcats from the Southwestern 4A. The Rams, a team that uh, started out a little bit rocky after opening with two wins. They lost two in a row, losing to East Mech, then losing to Olympic, but have turned it around since then with two wins in the past two weeks. Uh, a win over North Mech and a win over West Charlotte. So now they're two and one in the conference and part of a four-team pile up in that Tri-County 4A conference that includes West Charlotte, West Mech, and Olympic as well as Hardy. Well, Garinger is on the way up. You said that you didn't predict big things for Garinger this year. That's in a, in a way come true for Garinger. But uh, they're on the way up. They had a good game against Ashbrook last week, although they did get shut out. Ashbrook is one of the top teams in the state. And uh, we just look for them to try to shut down the passing attack of one of the best arms that anybody will ever see in high school, and that's Anthony Houston. I bragged on this kid because once you see him, he can throw it through the receiver 30 yards downfield, and there's a lot of college scouts, I'm sure. If he can make the grades, Anthony Houston's going to play big college ball somewhere. And, of course, the key for Garinger has been their defense. The defense has been very powerful throughout the course of the season. And in fact, last week, as you said, against Ashbrook, they were the only team to hold Ashbrook under 30 points this year, so that can give you an idea of how good they are. The problem has been the offense. They haven't had enough offense to go with that defense to give them the, the potency that they need. As we're getting set for the opening kickoff, there's number 33 and number 32 back deep to receive for the Wildcats. That's Reggie Miller, number 33, that you see. And this is 58 getting set to kick it away. That's Eddie Smith. And it's bobbled, the opening kick bobbled, the Wildcats fall on it at the 26-yard line. So they have a little trouble handling it. It'll be first and 10 for Garinger from their own 26. There's one thing that we don't need to see in this ball game, and that's Garinger having the turnovers early. They cannot let Houston get his hands on the ball more than necessary because if he does, it's going to be lights out early in this ball game. That's right. They've got to use, the, uh, use their offense as a weapon and keep... Uh, Houston on the sideline, that's where he can be least dangerous. The quarterback for Garinger, Dale Rainey, number 12, is set back tonight, 33, Reggie Miller, 32, David Thompson. First and 10, Garinger from their 26. Receivers split wide. Hand off in the backfield. Another that's, fumble, Jeff. Yeah, the ball popped loose. And Harding says they have it. And the officials indicate a Harding recovery. It looked like Reggie Miller, 33, fumbled the ball. And Harding came up with it, unable to see who it was. I think it was 59. It was a mob, wasn't it? We're going to call that a team effort. A bad handoff that time in the backfield by uh, Rainey, number 12 for Garinger. The halfback never got to hold the ball. Harding takes over on the Garinger 26-yard line. So the big turnover strikes instantly. Anthony Houston, number 12, the quarterback. Receivers put wide to both sides. He's got four receivers. We'll tell you about them in a minute. First down, back to pass. Houston going deep for the end zone, and it's a touchdown right off the bat. That's Kenny Stevenson. Harding will go for the throw. They have the quarterback, and you can see 26 yards out. He threw that pass at least 30 yards off of his back foot, Jeff, and that's incredible. Uh, if you don't believe it's tough, get out in the backyard and try it sometime. But uh, just like a bullet, perfect pass, Stevenson, uh, almost like a punt. It was easy to receive in the corner of the end zone. They practice it all the time, and you can see why uh, Houston's got such an arm. We didn't have to wait long to see it. 10 minutes and 53 seconds left in the first quarter, and Harding uh, will not be shut out this week. And number 25 will attempt the point after. We've got a flag down. The kick was up, and the kick was through, but we have a flag down. We'll wait for the official indication. Offsides against the offense, so they'll back it up, and they'll try the conversion attempt once again. Okay, let's go through the, uh, the refs tonight. Uh, the referee, Robert Moore, the umpire, Bobby Moore, the linesman, Steve Daly, field, ju field judge, John Couch, back judge, Brian Wall, and the clock operator is our buddy, George Washington, again. And so we try the conversion the second time. It's up and it's good. And with 10.53 to play in the first quarter of play, it's homecoming night. We've got, we've got another flag. Now another flag down. This is going to be a 30-yard field uh, extra point attempt if, yeah, if Harding see. keeps that up. Harding's already backed up, so let's see the call. Official indicates against Garinger, so that will 
They need to see a team captain out on the field. That's all yep. the rest trying to distinguish. It is seven nothing in favor of the Harding Rams. They wasted no time getting out in front. By the way, it is homecoming night here at Harding. Now let's see. If they keep well, that up, we'll, have, we'll have to attempt the extra point again. It appears so it will be. I don't see why the extra kick the extra penalty point, no, was against was. the defense. So. That's right. Theoretically, you'd think they yes, it's declined. The extra point stands. Yeah. So it's seven nothing in the first quarter. A little controversy very early on in the ball game, but Harding wastes no time getting on the scoreboard. First play, Houston to the air for a touchdown. You could see a lot of that tonight. Kenny Stevenson, one of his receivers, somebody that's getting a lot of attention this year. Number 11, Robert Johnson, a sophomore for Harding. Another outstanding receiver so far. They also have two A-backs or two tight ends in their lineup. 22, Calvin Smith, and 10, Lenny Helms, who's also a backup quarterback. So they go with four receivers and one back in the backfield, Jonathan Byers. So it's going to be a pass-oriented offense for the Harding Rams, and we saw the first example of that. But right now, we're going to get set to kick the ball away, and the Wildcats will get the ball again on offense down very early, 7 to nothing. If you went to get a Coke, it's too late. Come back, Houston's already nailed one from 26 yards out. And that's one of his favorite receivers, Kenny Stevenson. And David Thompson was the man you saw a moment ago, deep to receive for Garinger. 58 set to kick it off. And that is Brian Flaherty. And it's a short kick. It's going to bounce. They have trouble with it again. Harding's around it. Garinger's around it. Let's see who got it. Official in back says it's Garinger ball. That was number 42, I believe, that, that got the ball. He almost kicked it as far as the uh, kickoff man for Harding that time. Tim Marshall, 42. You see him go to the sideline. He's the one that jumped on the ball. Garinger, first and 10 at their own 23. The quarterback is Dale Rainey. Setbacks, Reggie Miller, David Thompson. The slap back is 22, Eric Carter. Wide receivers, number 86, Sean Kelly, a man that's got a lot of attention, a good wide receiver. On the far side, then on the near side, number 80, Brian Waugh. Up front, 77, Anthony Lewis, 74, Kevin Carr, 55, Tracy Buckman, 66, Charles Kirby, and 56, Patrick Seegers. We've got a, look like a, an injury to 32 for Harding that time. Maybe some, he's checking his equipment. I was that's O'Neill Falcon, and they certainly hate to. Well, he's, he was just checking his chin strap. I think he got it uh, broke loose diving for the, Fumble that time. There's Dale Rainey, the quarterback of the Wildcats. First down to 10. He's back to pass. Pressure coming. Dale Rainey gets away. He's going to run it. And Rainey on his oh, feet. Lost again, the football. Yeah. And Harding was all around it. So let's see what happened. I don't believe Harding picked it up, though. No. I think it took a bounce in favor of Garinger. Yes, 33. Reggie Miller came up with it. And I'll tell you what, that's uh, something Garinger cannot like so far. It was a gain on the play, look like, of about. Let's see, nine yards, yes, nine-yard pickup, and then a fumble, but a nine-yard run by the quarterback, so Rainey. You know, it was uh, chilly this morning, but it's, uh, hadn't, the chill hadn't got back in the air yet, and uh, I don't understand why they're having a problem holding on to the football. So second down, they need a yard. Rainey wants to pass, pressure's coming. He's going to roll to the near side. He's got all sorts of company. He's going to throw it away. He was trying to get it. Well, Sean Kelly said, well, this might be catchable. Made a good effort, but unable to get to it, so it's incomplete. That was definitely a good play by Rainey. One thing that the Harding defense does well, because they practice against the, the pass all the time when you got a quarterback like Houston, you uh, practice your pass rush a lot because he drops back in the pocket so much. You don't get to touch him in practice. I'm sure they don't let him tackle uh, Houston. He's such a valuable commodity. But... Uh, their pass rush is exceptional. If Garinger doesn't pick it up any better than that, Rainey's not going to have enough time to throw. So now it's third down and one for the Wildcats. The ball marked at the 31-yard line. Rainey calling signals. Two backs behind him. A give in the middle and nowhere. The defense Falcon, came up. 32. That was David Thompson that they gave the ball to. As you said, O'Neill Falcon came up and put the clamps on him. He got stopped cold for no gain. So fourth down. And the Wildcats need two, so that should bring up a punting situation, which would send in number 33, Reggie Miller. He is the running back who will also be handling the punts tonight. So the Harding Rams getting set to take over possession. Deep to receive is number 22 for the Rams. That is Ant that's Calvin Smith. Smith feels it, the 40. And he gets out to the 45, and that'll be all. So first down and 10 for the Harding Rams from their own 45. So excellent field position. 
leading seven to nothing with 8.45 to play in the first quarter. Correct me if I'm wrong, the coach from Harding is Tom Knotts, right? That assistant is right. Coach, assistant coach, one of my longtime buddies and uh, old high school coach is uh, Buddy Rigo, no pun intended, but uh, look for Harding to go for the throat. They're getting ready to, uh, they want to put some points on the board early, and let everybody have a chance to play at homecoming, and uh, Houston's going to go to the air. Well, he's going to fool us. They're going to go with Byers, who's a very capable runner, and he shows it there, picking up 11 yards on the far side. Jonathan Byers, his first carry, and it's a gain of 11, and that is what a good passing offense can do for you. When you have the ability to throw deep, the defense has to respect the pass so much, it opens up the, the ability of the running game, and Byers has had some good games this year. If the defense tries to stunt too much on Houston on these running plays, the backs are going to be wide open to pick up good yardage. And uh, the back fell that time, but still picked up about three or four yards right up the middle. That's right. Four-yard gain. That was Byers again. So Byers, two straight carries, does very well. Second down, about six. Might be time for Air Houston again. Come on, you wait, I don't Stevenson see why Stevenson to the near side. They've got the receivers wide. They're going to go on the ground again. Byers has all sorts of room inside the 35 and down to the 33. That's a gain of five, six, about seven yards. So Byers, three carries, and has picked up 22 yards. So he is off and marching. So Harding uh, expected to be able, you know, they, they figured they had to use their passing game because Garinger had been very capable against the run this season so far. But right now, they're finding out very early that the run is not a bad commodity itself. Receivers stacked to the near side. Houston calling signals. First and ten. Houston. Up the middle again. Byers. And Byers carries people inside the 30 to about the 27. So that's a pickup again of five-plus yardage. Looks like he got about six yards on the carry. Jonathan Byers looking like a bull. Make it a five-yard gain. They're giving him uh, good holes to run through, Jeff. Anytime you get two or three yards past the line of scrimmage before you run into a defensive man, you're going to pick up good yardage. You've got that full head of steam, and uh, you can drag some people a long way. And we see Byers uh, does that quite well. And the offensive line, as you say, doing an excellent job for the Rams right now. Second down and five. This time, Houston wants to pass. He's going deep, wide open. It's oh, Johnson baby. touchdown. The ball was right on target. Robert Johnson was there. And that is a 27-yard touchdown pass for oh, Anthony Houston. 6.26 left in the first quarter. And you know, we haven't had a whole lot of offense in the games we've done so far, but I think tonight may be a different story. The Rams saying, you want offense? We'll give you some. Two touchdowns in less than half a quarter. Well, I want to know why number 44, Antonio Walker, is not in the offensive lineup for Harding. Explain that to me while we get the extra point. And it well, is while we get the extra point blocked, so it's okay. going to be 13 to nothing. And the reason Antonio Walker is not in the offense is because they had to use him on the defense to beef up the defense. They've moved him to uh, strong safety, so he's going to play a lot on defense. He may play some on offense, but uh, obviously with Byers running the way he's running, they really don't have to have him there, so they use him on defense to help strengthen the defense. Wow. You get an all-county running back for, uh, we know, at least the last year or two in Antonio Walker, and you get, uh, had the advantage of putting him on defense. That just shows you how strong the Harding offense is. Well, you know, he's, he's also a very good defensive back, so he's you know, got the fame from his offensive play, but has done very well on defense as well. So Harding will be set to kick off. It's number 58 setting to kick it away. That is Brian Flaherty. Deep to receive is David Thompson, number 32, and number 33, Reggie Miller, standing back at about the 25-yard line. Fort 13 to nothing. Harding. Homecoming here at Harding High. Thompson to the 25 to 30. And taken down at about the 32, so it'll be first and 10 at that point for the Wildcats. He's taken down that time by number 80, Vincent Guy for Harding. The Rams out in front, 13 to zip. Don't wait till the fourth quarter to pull the tricks out of the bag. 
That's right. You need to get something started now. Three yards and a cloud of dust is not going to handle uh, Anthony Houston tonight. 84 in the ball game now for the Wildcats at one receiver. Rainey calling signals on first and ten. There we go. Something a little different. They're going to pick up good yardage. Near side, it's number 22 on the reverse out across the 40 to the 41. A gain of close to nine by Eric Carter. Carter on the carry. So his first carry on a reverse. And a good game. So it'll be second down. They need about one. If you're going to get beat, you might as well give it your best shot. You practice trick plays. I'm down 13 to zip halfway through the first quarter. It's time to uh, let them out. What do you think, Jeff? I think it's definitely a good choice. They don't have the big size or a tremendous passing threat on offense, so they have to mix things up. They're going to throw a rifle pass to Kelly complete. That was a good pass yes, to was. the 50 by Rainey. That's going to be a pass good for about nine yards. So well, that showed up. just as I say something about the not, not necessarily having the deep passing threat, we see a rifle by Rainey right on target to Sean Kelly. That pass didn't have much of a hump in it either, and that was uh, at least a 25-yard pass, even though they only picked up nine, nine yards on the play. Most of that pass was thrown east-west. And a good job. They got receivers stacked up to the near side this time. Three receivers on the near side. Rainey back to pass on first down. The defense is coming with pressure. Rainey passes it. He's going to throw it short. And Brian Waugh, no, Sean Kelly, tried to come up for it but was unable to get there. So it's incomplete, and it will be second down and 10. Rainey, though, from what I've heard from some people that have been following Garinger during the course of the season, is progressing per week. He's getting better and better as each week goes by, and that will help the passing game of the Wildcats, which can in turn help the running game, and maybe they can get some offense going by the latter part of the season. The good news for the Wildcats is this is a young team, so a lot of these players will be back next year. That's right. Throwing outside of Kelly. Kelly is hit immediately by Damon Bullock, but Kelly makes the catch and picks up about six in the process. Sean Kelly. Those type of plays, the 10-yard turn in that time. Rainey put it on the button again, a good pass. They don't, well, they only picked up seven yards, but what that allows them to do, it makes the defense try to tighten up and uh, that will allow Garinger to go for the big play, the look in and go, and hopefully Rainey will be able to hit him for the bomb. And both teams will score in the first quarter, something we haven't seen on That's right. cable vision all year. Now, last week, had we been able to do the schedule of the Olympic North game, we would have had a first non-shutout game. It was 7-3. to three. But Rainey is in all sorts of trouble. He gets away, scrambles again, and gets swarmed under. As he got back to about the 44, it's going to still be a loss of two on the play. I'll tell you what, Rainey was running for his life. If Garinger has a screenplay in their repertoire, they need to try it right now because they're just getting too big a pass rush for Rainey to set up in the pocket. Either that or do like uh, the Redskins do. They roll to the right or roll to the left and set up the pocket away from the natural pocket and uh, give Rainey time to throw because we see that he has got a good arm. He has completed some passes and uh, look out. So it's fourth down and we're going to go for it. All right, fourth down and about five. So the Wildcats setting to go. Receivers stacked to the far side. Three receivers. Rainey is back a pass. Blitz is coming. Rainey is going to have to run for He's it. He's going to pick it He's up. He's got too. it. 40, 30. He's got more. He's taken down and out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Rainey with a great run. That was from the 45. Make it a gain of 20. And a first down, a scrambling quarterback, Dale Rainey. And the Wildcats show a little offensive excitement, marking the ball just inside the 25. First down and 10. I talked to some of the fans um, for the game started tonight, and they said that Garinger, their offense does not have any problem getting the ball inside their opponent's 30. It's taking it from the 30 into uh, pay dirt that Garinger's had the trouble this year. Well, they've got one back in the backfield, Miller. They've got three receivers stacked to the far side. Back to pass, pitch out to Miller. Miller. Tries to get outside, cannot do it. Good pursuit by Antonio Walker, number 44. He got maybe a yard, but that's about it. We saw Walker make the play of the year last year against uh, West Charlotte with little time left on the scoreboard. And we can see why he made that play. Uh, he was a blur out on the, on the halfback that time. Looked like the halfback was gonna pick up good yardage and Walker just closed the gap early. And that is an example of, of what Walker can do. Of course, with the speed that Walker has, he's an excellent pursuit. 
They're going to have two receivers to the near side. Two backs behind the quarterback, Rainey. Second and nine. Rainey, under pressure, gets away, stumbles, gets back to the line. I think the ball popped loose, but 77 jumped on it to save a fumble. And I tell you what, all the running that Rainey's having to do, the defense swiping at the ball. That time they knocked it loose, but 77 was able to save it, and that was Lewis, Anthony Lewis, that jumped on it. Mm, they need to go to the shotgun to give Rainey some time. I tell you what, Darnell Gray and Eddie Smith are putting a lot of pressure on Rainey. Eddie Smith, 6'1", 230-pound senior, and of course, Darnell Gray, 6'2", 265, the junior. So there's some big fellas, and they're getting good penetration. The halfbacks are going to have to do some blocking. It looks like they're pouring through like water. Back to pass. Rainey dumps it off to Thompson, who's cut under by 51. And that is, I believe, Winchester, Billy Winchester, the left defensive end. So he got dropped for a loss of five. Despite the completion. He tried throwing a little flare pass out in the flat on the weak side of the field that time. And Harding. They're awake on these passes. They practice against the pass so much and they get to see the ball drilled all week. It's not unusual for them to put up a good defense against the pass. Well, it's fourth down and about 20. The Wildcats, though, are going. Back to pass. He's got some time. Now he loses it. Pressure. They got the pass away. Picked off by Antonio Walker. Walker with the interception headed the other way. On his feet and taken out of bounds at the 43. So Rainey was under all sorts of pressure and throws the interception. Walker makes a great return, and Harding has the football. So the second turnover of the ballgame. We've got 50 seconds left in the first quarter as we're almost through with the opening quarter here at Harding. 13 to nothing, the Rams with the lead, and now they have the ball again at their own 43-yard line. Houston calling signals, receivers wide to both sides. Throwing to the sideline, complete to number 22, the 50. And taken out of bounds, at, and a flag goes down. It's going to be a late hit against Walter Buford, I believe. 83. Calvin Smith made the catch. I saw Garinger needed to have a unnecessary roughness. Did you see that? The pass that he made, that was just right on target. That's one of the harder passes to make. You got the uh, offensive man, the back coming, or I guess he was a slot man coming straight out. Looked like he was going out of bounds, and it was a 20-yard pass just right on line in a perfect spot. Easy catch for the, uh, for the slot man that time. First down and 10 now for the Rams at the Garinger 30-yard line. So the Rams moving the ball again. They've got receivers to both sides. to give this to the fullback. Byers breaks a tackle, and he's in the open field. All the way inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line from the 30. That's a gain of 22 yards. And Byers is getting some huge holes to run through and wasting no time with the opportunity. That was pure athletic ability that time by Byers. He let the blocks happen inside. He made his cut. Went wide open. Looked like a George Rogers cut up the middle for Washington. The way this kid runs, no wonder Walker's on defense. Of course, and Walker's an offensive weapon on the... Uh, on defense, isn't he? That's right. And we've got six seconds on the clock. The flag went down. I believe we have delay a game against Harding. Let's see. I don't think so. Offside. Offsides against Garriger. So somebody jumped early. That'll move the ball half the distance to the goal line. So that marks it at the four-yard line. And the end of the first quarter as the clock runs out after one quarter of play here on homecoming night at Harding High School, the home standing Rams are out in front of the Garinger Wildcats, 13 to nothing. And Tom Ray, we talked about the explosiveness of Anthony Houston and the Harding offense, and we've seen it in the first quarter. Houston has gone to the air three times, completed all three attempts twice for touchdowns. And Jonathan Byers, getting excellent help from his front line, has carried a ball five times for 49 yards just in the first quarter alone. So the Rams are moving the ball at will against the Wildcats. Well, I 
I think it's interesting. You take the games last week, uh, Harding, they played the game of the year so far against West Charlotte and won last week, and it pepped them up. And then you take a team like Geringer that played the game of the year so far for them against Ashbrook, and they get beat, but they played a good game. Then they come back this week a little bit flat, and Harding just taking it to them early. And they're looking for the end zone. Caught by Touchdown. number 11, Johnson, and that's four passes, three of them for touchdowns, four-yard pass. And what can you say about Anthony Houston? This is incredible. We're going to invite him up here. <laughs> We're going to invite him up here at halftime to have a little speech with us. Four passes, three touchdowns. That one for four yards, so it's 19 to nothing. And Harding is on a roll. This could be the first game that Garinger doesn't improve this year, unless they do something <laughs> fast. Last year they lost 34 to nothing to the same Harding Rams. But uh, there's a chance that their streak of improvement could end tonight if they don't get something going on defense fast. They're setting up for a two-point conversion, having had the extra point block before. Another pass. He's going to no. He's going to pitch it out late. Walker. Walker tries to jump over. Well, he turned the corner oh, and then fought his way in. That is tough. Looked like he tried to jump over, couldn't get in. Then he fought off the tackle and fell into the end zone. Power running by Walker gets the two-point conversion, and it is 20. Uh, what? 20 to nothing or 21, 21 to nothing? Yeah. It should be. It's 20. It was 19 before the uh, two-point conversion. Should be 21 to nothing. So yeah. the scoreboard only showing 20. But Harding 21, Garinger nothing. 11:55 remaining in the second quarter. We just getting underway if you just joined us it's been the Rams offensive show Anthony Houston starring as usual has thrown four passes all of which have been complete for 69 yards and three touchdowns need I say any more well there's one thing you can say about Houston is that you get to see a quarterback with an arm like this uh, once every 10 years but we've been fortunate uh, 33 Reggie Miller is down deep along with 32 David Thompson to receive there he is Reggie Miller and the kickoff fielded by 42 still on his feet fighting forward to about the 39 yard line that was good hard running by Tim Marshall but we had another quarterback uh, that's going to run into some good luck we'll know uh, just how well he did when this game is aired and that's Mark May at in North Carolina, we hope, uh, hope him, wish him well. And you said you got to see his arm. I've never seen him perform, but if he's got an arm, anything like Houston, wow. Well, you know, he hasn't played very much for the Tar Heels. He's had his shoulder problems, has played sparingly this year, but has done well during the times he's been in. So it should be very interesting uh, to see how things turn out in that game. And of course, State uh, a lot stronger this year. Rainey on first down, under pressure, running. And he got back to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. He had uh, big number 78 chasing him down. And that is Daryl Gray, 6'2", 265-pound junior. Makes it awfully difficult to uh, run when you're only uh, 180 pounds and you got a guy 260 on your back. That pocket has a bad leak in it, doesn't it, Jeff? It's letting three or four in there that's beating him back to his uh, setup point, his, his drop. But surprisingly, he's making, he's getting yardage on them. He's carried the ball four times. He's gotten 29 yards. He's their leading rusher. Oh, he's slick. Rainey's hard to catch. Second and eight, Miller to the near side. Pops his way out. He's hit by Chad Armstrong as he gets across the 45 to the 46, a pickup of about four. It was only a matter of time before Geringer tried to get to the outside. They've had no luck up the middle. The runs they tried to make up the middle have not, uh, not accomplished anything. And especially they're getting such a pass rush up the middle. <laughs> Their passing has been ineffective too. Making it real difficult. It's going to force Rainey to have to try to roll and throw. That's right. And that's uh, when you can flush the quarterback out of the pocket, that's a dangerous situation for an offense. They're going to go up the middle. Not much running room. A pickup on the play of a yard maybe. The Harding defense has the gears pinned back now. They are ready to go up 21 zip. That was Reggie Miller that got that call. I don't envy Rainey's position at all. They got it. But so now it's going to be, well, they got two yards. It's going to be fourth down. And it's going to be close. We're going to have a measurement. It looks like from where we are that they're going to be a little bit short. But 
He got a good mark from the referee if that's a first down. You take a look. And they are going to be quite a way short. Quite a way short. Yeah. Look like about uh, better than half a yard. Well, more than that. Baker. They're going to mark it about a yard short. I don't even think you need a measurement on that. I say after halftime, I go down there and trade pieces with Jerry, and you have him as your guest uh, color man in the second half. It looks like he's got the best position down there on the field with the pretty Garinger cheerleaders tonight. Fourth down and one for the Wildcats. They're lined up uh, to punt the football away, the first punt by the Wildcats. Reggie Miller got it away under pressure, fielded by 22. And he's going to be corralled and taken down at about the 27-yard line. That's Calvin Smith on the return for the Rams. It'll be first down and 10 for the Rams. It just goes to show how a football program can turn around. Two years ago when we were here, Garinger and Harding played to overtime, and I think Garinger won that ball game in overtime. I'm sure you remember that, Jeff. 27 to 24. Okay, that's what I knew you would remember if anybody in this world had, uh, had that game in mind. And in the last two years, Garinger just uh, hadn't had the talent to work with, and it uh, shows on the field against Harding. Well, you know that, plus the fact that they lost their head coach of that year, Steve Shaughnessy. So good carry by Byers as he comes to the near side. He's across the 30 to the 34-yard line. It's a pickup of about six yards. And, uh, of course, a new coach for the Wildcats this year, first-year coach Ken Lawrence, who has been an assistant at Independence and at South Mecklenburg schools where the football program has been successful so he hopes to uh, turn things around for the Wildcats and so far this year has done that they've been a lot better defensively and most of the coaches I've talked to that have played the Wildcats have said they're one of the hardest hitting teams they play Fires mm. up the middle you could have drove a bus through that and all the way down to the 40 yard line Fires. 25 yard carry in the offensive line we're going to have to say something about these guys as Let's he's got do. 80 yards and seven carries. The men up front for Harding. Number 65, Sam Presley. Number 68, Raymond Crenshaw. Number 55, Bobby Hansen. 57, Mark Lattimore. And 77, Chris Briggs. These men are open in the way for the Harding offense. Walker in the backfield for the first time. Antonio Walker inside the 40 to the 35. He's going to get five on the play. You have to put Walker in and give him some, some time to run in case one of your... Uh, starting backs go down. You don't want him to have the ring rust in an important game and uh, not be used to uh, the cuts and breaks that a halfback has to make and has to he has to run the ball a certain number of times to get that uh, fluid motion in his uh, running game. So now they've got Byers back in the backfield. Second down and five for the Rams at the 35-yard line of Garinger. Handoff to Byers. Byers in the near side, being taken down by Kyle Knowles, number 52. Byers got back to the line of scrimmage. That was all, and 52 was the man there. That's Kyle Knowles. There you see him. A lot of people very high on that guy. Probably the one, the best, if not uh, the best player that Garinger has defensively this year. They're going for the throat. Yeah, right here. Stevenson flank wide to the right. Johnson flank to the near side, looking to throw, but nope. they're going to go again with Byers, who breaks several tackles inside the 30 to about the 26-yard line. That's a pickup of nine yards. Byers is doing a fine job. They stopped him one time on nine carries. He has nine carries, 89 yards. He's only been stopped, really, one time. Now I see why Joe Volts didn't want to come keep the stats for this game because I'm sure Byers is getting, he's going to get the triple figures early. Oh, he's well on the way. It is first and 10 for Harding. The ball marked at their 31-yard line. Back to pass goes Houston. He's going deep, looks for Stevenson, and he's at the one-yard line and taken down. And that is another great pass, 27 yards roughly. He, he had a corner pattern that time, 30 yards down the field, hit the man right in stride. Great pass, great quarterback, a good catch by Stevenson. And so five passes for Anthony Houston, 92 yards and three touchdowns. They'll They've got by, first and goal at the two. They'll probably let Byers go in for this one. Yeah. They do. Byers goes to untouched. He just comes around the corner. Nobody is there for the defense. And Byers has a touchdown on a two-yard run. 
Well, I think this is important for Geringer because they're going to realize that they came up against a superior talent tonight in Houston. They're not going to get to play against many quarterbacks that can, can drill it like he can. You can't rush him because he hands the ball off of Byers. He picks up nine yards, and then uh, you try to pick up Byers. He drops back in the pocket. He eluded one defender that time, and just beautiful, right to the corner. He has been perfectly on target. The point after is good, and with 6.28 to play in the first half, and we're only in the first half, folks, 28 to nothing. The Harding Rams are out in front, and we do have a flag down, though. And it's going to be against the defense, so the conversion apparently will stand. He might be one of the few high school quarterbacks that uh, have a pro quarterback rated arm coming out of high school. What do you think about that, Jeff? I'll tell you, I think, you know, I don't know what his scholastic average is, but if he's got a good scholastic average, there are a lot of colleges that would have to be looking at Anthony Houston as a potential quarterback. If he couldn't make it in the college and college ranks and uh, for whatever reason, I'm sure if the semi-pro team, the well not semi-pro, but the a pro team, the Charlotte Hornets, or whatever, would have would have used him well. What was the name of that Charlotte team, Jeff? It's been, been well, a few the years. World Football League. We had the Hornets. Then the the semi-pro league that was around for a while, the American Football Association. We had the Chargers, okay. and of course, followed by the Storm. For which, by the way, Tom Knotts, the head coach of Harding, was a member of that team. I say he could have started for all three. Going to the near side, Rainey on the return himself. You don't like to see your quarterback returning kicks, but he gets it to the 42. The first and 10 for Garringer there. Yeah, I so went down to the field, Tom, before the game to uh, see the coach, Tom Knott. He was back there warming up the old arm. I said, yeah, it looks like you're getting ready to start tonight in case anything happens to Houston. Huh? He says, I'm ready. He doesn't like to have nightmares mentioned to him, though. We saw Houston get hurt in the playoffs last year, and that really change the outlook of the Harding players and they got beat that night. Well, made such a big difference. I think if uh, if they could stay healthy, uh, the Rams team, even though they're not ranked in the top 10, they're not even ranked in the top 10 right now. As you see, a lot of pressure on Rainey. He had to dump it off incomplete. That was an attempted screen that time. And that play is going to work, but you have to have the time and just a little bit better than that. Uh, the quarterback was rushed too much, had too many hands in his face, and could not make a good pass back there. As we talk uh, a little bit more about Harding, during this week they came out with the top ten ratings. Greensboro Page rated number one in the state. No surprise there. A couple of schools from Fayetteville, two and three. So no surprises in those top three rankings. A big surprise in the top ten. Harding did not appear. But I think if they can keep going the way they've been the last three weeks, as we see an interception by Damon Bullock, and Bullock has the third turnover against the Wildcats, brings it back to the 35, and first down and 10, the Rams, and it has been all Harding so far. That pass went right to Bullock. Bullock made a great play, though. Well, he made a good catch. He was able to get in position. Was it? Well, I may have said incorrectly. That may have been number 84 for the Rams. No, that was 24. You were right, Jeff. So first and 10 for the Rams. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Houston, handoff. Byers has lots of room, shrugs a tackle, and gets inside the 30 to the 29, finally taken down there by Kyle Knowles, but not until he gained about six yards. Byers did part-time running for Harding last year, as I remember. Did a good job, and boy, is he coming out in style tonight on Hometown Cable 3. And unofficially, he has 97 yards. Mm. Mercy. On 11 carries, so he is off to another great start. And put Houston, he's got to be close to the 100-yard mark in his passing game, too. He's got 92 <laughs> unofficially. Second and five. Houston keeps himself. He wanted a handoff, but the timing was off, so Houston's going to run it, get a little running yardage. He gets up close to the first down. That'll be a gain of five. Or So Houston says, well, I passed some. Let me just keep it this time. He picks up uh, four. And he's got the first down, so Harding keeps the drive alive. On the basketball team, they had two Anthony Houstons, and he was one of them. He came in and played part-time. A fair shooter, but they had another... Uh, another, another Anthony shooter. Houston, yeah, another even Anthony better. Houston that uh, played 
as good a basketball as this kid does at quarterback. Three receivers. Fires alone in the backfield. Houston call signals back to pass. End zone pass. Johnson, it's thrown long and out of bounds. That was a good pass, though. There was pressure back there. It was thrown either where Johnson could catch it or no one could catch it, so it ends up incomplete. And that's the first incompletion for Anthony Houston on the night. That one was just a little bit deep. Not a bad start, though. Five of six with three touchdowns. That's right. Second down and 10. Houston back. Oh, let's see what he's going to do. Assume that he's going to go back to pass. He will throw a short one, but incomplete. That was a little high, but should have been caught by number 22. And that was Calvin Smith. When Smith moved into, into the slot that time, it put man-to-man uh, -man coverage on Garringer on the outside, and he would have just had one man to beat if he would have could have held on to that pass. So third down coming up, four minutes, three seconds now, all the remaining of the first half. It's homecoming night here at Harding, and the fans have been treated uh, very well so far. Their team out in front by four touchdowns. Houston back to pass, under some pressure. He's going to roll to the near side. Still under pressure, passes it, throws it incomplete. And Houston is taken out of bounds finally. Looking he would have had some time to set up that time, Jeff. Uh, Calvin Smith was open on another corner pattern. He'd worked his way clear down around the end zone and just didn't give Houston time to set up and throw. Well, that time the Wildcats got good penetration, and they were able to flush Houston out of the pocket despite a couple of good blocks as Houston rolled to the near side. Uh, he just uh, had to rush too much and ends up throwing it low. So fourth down. They're going to go for it, though. Fourth down. Of course, when you hit 28 nothing, what have you got to lose? And you're on the other team's 25. That's right. Pressure all over him. Uh -oh, pass is complete down. by Tulane Helms, number 10. Helms gets down oh. to the one-yard line, maybe Sweetheart. a little bit closer than that. That was from the 20. So make that a 19-yard pass by Anthony Houston. Harding, or most has Harding has scouted Garinger so well. That when they put a man out in the slot, they're getting man-to-man -man coverage down there, and Houston's picking them apart. You can see when they, when they do catch the ball, they've only got one man to beat, and he almost beat him to the corner. So his first and goal from the one and in the ball game, just coming in is Antonio Walker. So he's going to be in the backfield with Byers, and you're probably going to see one of those fellas get the ball here on first and goal from the one. They're going to give to Byers. And Byers gets in for the touchdown. Well, the official indication. Now we have the official indication by the other official. And so it's going to be his official a indication one -yard was run. That, that was an official indication. That's what uh, that's what that look was on that ref's face. Three minutes and 19 seconds to play in the first half. Harding 34 and Garringer nothing. Houston's got three touchdown passes and he's altogether one yard away from having five touchdown passes because it's a one yard run for the uh, fourth touchdown and less than a foot for that touchdown. Extra point is good and so with 319 to play in the first half Gar uh, Harding 35 and Garringer nothing and the Harding Rams are just really rolling and of course, Anthony Houston on that drive went over the 100 yard mark for the night. He's thrown nine times. He's completed six of those nine for 111 yards and three touchdowns. Passes of 26, 27, and four yards. And the Rams are rolling on homecoming night. Some other action, of course, taking place this week around the uh, two conferences in the Tri-County 4A, Crest against North Mecklenburg, West Mech at East Gaston, and a big game at West Charlotte, the Olympic Trojans at West Charlotte in a battle of two and one teams out there. So it's gonna be an important game. In the Southwestern 4A, Ashbrook is at Independence, Myers Park at South Mech, and East Mech at Huss. Big game at Huss. There's a kickoff fielded out to the 20, the 30, to about the 35 and stop there. And Garringer will have the football. Harding would be tough when they get up against the opponent. I wonder how much they used Walker and Byers in the same backfield last week. 
We haven't seen uh, Byers block any because he's had such a hole to run through. They've had him running the ball the whole time. Of course, last week we had some scores happening in the Tri-County. Harding beat West Charlotte, as you talked about, 23-14. North Mac beat Olympic 7-3. West Mac blank Crest 14-0. In the Southwestern 4A, Ashbrook over Garinger, 26-0. Independence over Myers Park, 17-14. First down, Garinger. They give us up the middle. Good run by Miller. Miller is all the way out across the 48. So a pickup of 10, 11, about 12 yards by Reggie Miller. Good hard running. And that's going to be good. And if I know Coach Rigo over there on the sidelines, he's having a fit. His team's up 35 to zip. And his defense just gave up a 15-yard run. He's going to—he's over there livid. And the other score from last week that we wanted to talk about was South Mac over Gastonia Huts, 22 to nothing. And the Sabers got the turnaround last week. And yes. Rainey under all sorts of pressure right now, and he's taken out of bounds. Flag went down. That's going to be a personal face foul, face mask probably against 82. That was a busted play that time. Rainey went back to hand off and he turned the wrong way to play. He got lucky and picked up a face mask penalty. So we'll move it upfield. Garinger will gain 15 yards to first down for the Wildcats with 218 to play. And this, I think, will be the first time Garinger has gotten the, no, correct, correct myself there, the second time they've gotten inside Harding territory. They did have the one drive. There's a good shot of the Wildcat cheerleaders. Jerry Smith down on the field, uh, keeping them company tonight. I think Jerry has to pay for his ticket to get in <laughs> and get such a good seat. Rainey back to pass. Everybody coming, and he throws it too far. Sean Kelly just didn't have enough time to get there. Rainey couldn't wait as a sea of maroon was coming in on him. He's and got to be tough to hang in. That pass rush just came rushing through. We'd see a different Harding team on offense if uh, Houston didn't have any more time to throw than that too, Jeff. That's right. And, of course, there was one other score last week. An interconference matchup, the East Mech Eagles beat the East Gaston Warriors 27-7. So things keep rolling for the East Mech Eagles. We'll see them next week at Harding. But right now, Garinger with the ball to the near side, rolling and throwing deep, and overthrows everybody. His closest receiver was 22, Eric Carter. But Rainey just threw that one away. Didn't have anybody open, so he just dumped it into the end zone wisely. There's a shot of the Garinger sideline, and right now that has to be a frustrating place to be. Down 35 to nothing. And you still have a minute 51 in the first half. There's head coach Ken Lawrence of the Wildcats, a first-year coach. Things have been on a constant improvement run this season for them until tonight. They've run into a red-hot Ram machine. They're going to have to Anthony improve Houston. on the second half over the first half in this ball game. Under all mm. sorts of pressure, nowhere to go for the quarterback. He's buried. Look at that. Four people there. O'Neill Falcon, the, one of the lead men, and that's a loss of seven. And I tell you what, you can't fault the quarterback for that. There's just nothing the quarterback can do when you've got that kind of pressure coming in, and it's consistent almost every play. They're on him like ugly on an eight, Jeff, and I feel sorry for him. He's got another half to go through. I'm, I'm sure he feels like he's been, been through a war or something out there, but... <laughs> Got plenty of time left. Might be a smart idea to try your second string quarterback. God bless his soul because he's going to take some abuse too if he gets in there behind Rainey. If Rainey's going to be the quarterback to be, there's no use getting him abused in the backfield. Back to fast. Pressure coming again. Winchester, 75. The ball popped loose. I don't know if it's incomplete or what. We'll have to wait and see. Looked like he brought the oh, arm forward. Man. It's a fumble. The official indicates it's a fumble. And Harding has the foot. Well, no, that was fourth down, so irregardless, Harding would take over. So I don't know if that's a fumble or not. It doesn't really matter. Harding takes over possession. I think he was in the grasp. I don't think that was a fumble. We see another uh, different quarterback for Harding. 15. This is, I believe, Lenny Helms. First pass thrown complete to number 83, I believe. 83 makes a catch down to the 35 for 10, about 13 yards. Have they got you fooled, Jeff? No, it's got Ed Long. Ed Long, yes. Ed Long, the other quarterback, he threw the pass to 83, and that is 
Well, who is 83? I don't have an 83 on my roster, but he made the reception. It was good for 15 yards. So Lawing's first attempt was complete. We can uh, see that the Garinger coach is a little bit upset about it. His troops are getting beat 35 to zip, and Harding calls a timeout like they're trying to run the ball into the uh, score another touchdown before half. Obviously, Coach Knotts believes uh, enough is not enough. Well, we're going to get to see the backups uh, with 35 seconds left in the first half. 35 to nothing. The Harding Rams out in front of Garinger. And they're going to go with their second team now, probably. You'll see a lot of second team people in. Lawing is over near the sidelines. Also in there is number 11. Well, there you see some of the seniors. The homecoming court. That's right. The homecoming court for the Harding Rams. Good looking couple starting out. I don't know how the rest of the mugs look, but that's a stately looking gentleman. And still Lawing back to pass. Flags are down. Pressure's coming. Lawing gets the pass away looking for Johnson. And Johnson made the catch inside the 10 at about the six yard line. But let's see, the flag is in the backfield of Harding. And they're waving it back. So let's bring it back. It's against the Rams. And you said Johnson is a sophomore, too. That's right. Robert Johnson, only a sophomore, and he looks good. So when <laughs> Stevenson graduates, they've got an air for him already. So. Well, they've got to find somebody that can throw the ball to him. That's Houston's right. That, gone. That's going to be a concern. But Lawing is only a junior. He'll be back next year. And we've seen him play. He's a pretty good quarterback. Now, whether you can say he's an Anthony Houston, you know, you can't say that about too many people. So, but Lawing looks like a capable quarterback, and if he can get experience this year, it'll help him next year. They're going to call timeout again. Harding's tough. 16 Never say seconds. Die. Looks like they want to score again. I think the Garinger coach is going to remember this thrashing that he's getting, and especially at the end of the first half, they're caught. They're using up all their timeouts to try to score. <laughs> I feel sorry for him when they get some when they get some horses at Garinger and uh, Harding's having an off year because they're going to get punished. I'm sure. A good look there, Jerry, you rascal. The Garinger cheerleaders. Not a lot to cheer about right now. Down 35 to nothing. So they're going to take a little break. One of the games we talked about last year, uh, last week rather, South Mech over Hush. The turnaround for South Mech. We've said we've seen them. Three times, we said all three times, a good defense on the South Bank team. All they have to do is get an offense together, and they can be a good team. Last week was a critical game for them in the conference, playing Huss, one of the two teams that is fighting for that third position, the other team being Independence, that third playoff position for the Southwestern 4A, and Huss with some good runners, six turnovers. The South Bank defense was able to come up with last week, and they won 22 to nothing. Back to pass is Loin. Lawing throwing out of bounds. He wanted to hit Walker on the play. Kyle Knowles was covering. Going to have Holden on Harding. And I think we've got some substitutions in uh, on the line. And Look for Coach Knotts to sit on the ball right now. Surely he's not going to try to punish him. Well, this is homecoming, so you never know. The fans want you to keep on trying. Make the other team stop you. But for the Wildcats, they really haven't had much success with that. And they have uh, as good a defense probably as anybody. But tonight, there's been no stopping the Harding Rams. They have been on cue at everything they have attempted. There's a good shot of one of the Harding faithful in the Harding band. Ed Lawing. First down and long yardage. They're going to give it to Walker, who's in the game. And Walker goes forward for a gain of about eight yards. Antonio Walker, he's carried the ball twice. He's got 13 yards in the ball game. And that is the end of the first half of play here at Harding High School. And on homecoming night at Harding, the Rams are rolling to a 35 to nothing halftime lead over the Garinger Wildcats. What can you say if you miss the first half, you missed a scoring barrage by Anthony Houston and we look forward to seeing more of the second half we hate to see it but uh, there you have it 35 zip at half lots of big numbers to talk about we'll let you know about those as we come back for the second half we'll be back after this <laughs> <laughs> 